The longest bridge in the world will allow you to drive over one of America's major lakes and according to some will demonstrate the curvature of the earth. The Lake Pontchartrain Causeway has a deep and illustrious history featuring many technological innovations that were created in order to resolve many obstacles in the story of adaptation and achievement. As it still stands today, the causeway is an engineering marvel, breaking many records and barriers. But what exactly is the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, and why do so many fear crossing it? Today we discover the engineering marvel that is the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway. I'm your host Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. This episode is brought to you by War Thunder, military vehicle combat online game. Free to play on PC, Xbox Series XS, PlayStation 5, and previous console generations. The experience will move you with great graphics, authentic sound effects, and beautiful music, creating an atmosphere to fully immerse yourself in. Not to mention, there's no purchase necessary. You simply download and play. You won't be playing alone either because War Thunder is fully cross-platform between all available platforms. Players on PC and both generations of Xbox and PlayStation all play on the same servers, meaning you'll enjoy the company of more than 50 million players from all over the world. Personally speaking, I love the game because it put a great emphasis on realism. My favorite vehicle is the Type 93. Although it's not an obvious choice, you'll understand my respect for it upon trying it yourself. This vehicle has the fastest speeds in game and is a more than adequate speed for off-road. So don't miss out. Register now by using my link in the description below to play for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. You'll get 500,000 Silver Lions, three vehicles, a 50% EXP booster, a seven-day premium account booster, and much more. So what is the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway? Well, it may seem like a simple question at first, but this structure is far more than any standard bridge that crosses a lake. It is also important to understand on a deeper level what this structure is in order to better appreciate its accomplishments. From a mechanical point of view, the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, which is sometimes just called the Causeway, is a massive fixed link bridge that goes across Lake Pontchartrain, a huge lake in southeastern Louisiana, with the northern terminus leading into the city of Mandeville and the southern terminus located in Mandary, a suburb in New Orleans. The total length of Lake Pontchartrain Causeway is approximately 24 miles long, making it the longest continuous bridge over water in the entire world. The causeway itself is actually composed of two parallel bridges spanning the entirety of Lake Pontchartrain, and it is held up by 9,500 concrete pilings. The causeway also contains several other features, such as a drawbridge near the North Shore End, Beyond the engineering perspective, the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway holds a special place in New Orleans society, both as a structure that instills fear in many, but also as an invention that serves as a convenience and even a lifesaver in some cases. Factors that we will examine in depth in the upcoming chapters. The causeway is not only one of the most awe-inspiring, audacious man-made structures in human architectural history, but is also one of the scariest and petrifying, as we have said before. For example, once drivers reach about eight miles into the bridge, they go so far into the lake and away from any of the shorelines that land itself is no longer visible. This gives the chilling illusion that the bridge simply doesn't end, and the drivers are stuck in an infinite body of water that is Lake Pontchartrain. Furthermore, because the causeway is only 15 to 16 feet above the water, enormous clouds of fog often pass through, covering the bridge and adding a whole other element of fear factor. In order to avoid accidents or collisions, the authorities outlined several procedures for cases of heavy fog. These instructions tell drivers to side over to the right lane and refrain from passing other cars while also keeping on their headlights and staying close enough to the person in front of them so that their taillights are visible. Again, because the land is no longer in sight at a certain point, the blinding heavy fog or simply the amount of time it takes to cross the massive bridge, the police report that every year they have to rescue numerous 
anxious drivers who are pushed to the point of having a panic attack. Some people even completely freeze up due to the seaborne fear. In these instances, police officers usually drive out to the causeway and guide scared passengers through a terrifying bridge. The bridge also brings life, well, in a way. Considering how long the causeway is, it's been stated that babies have been born here and at one time a plane had to land on the road, saving aviators from what would have otherwise been a disastrous situation. So by now I think it's safe to say that we've established that to many, this is a pretty scary bridge. But one thing that is far more scary to everyone else is the amount of time that it used to take to drive around this lake. Hence the construction of the world's longest bridge over water. The history of the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway actually goes far back into Louisiana's past. Today, the city of New Orleans is the most populous city in the state and is also one of the biggest cities in the American South. It grew to this point after going through vast periods of expansion in the 1940s and 1950s as the economy was booming nationwide and the population overall increased. However, one of the biggest obstacles that New Orleans faced was its geography. More specifically, the city is situated right on top of Lake Pontchartrain, which separates it from other nearby cities and towns. While travel by boat was widely used, this especially became an issue for people attempting to travel from the suburbs on the North Shore to the metropolitan area on the Southern Shore by car, since going around either side of the lake took a long time. Hence, the ambitious idea was conjured up to construct a bridge that simply goes across the entirety of the lake. Surprisingly, the concept of a bridge has been around since the early 1800s, before cars were even prevalent in society, but the limits of technology at that time stopped it from ever taking off. The man behind this idea, Bernard de Marigny, who was also the founder of the city Mandeville, compromised and opened a ferry service instead. Fast forward about a hundred years, and the desire for a bridge resurfaced, with plans now involving the construction of several artificial islands that would link together a series of bridges. By the 1940s, this plan, now under the authority of Ernest M. Loeb Jr., would then evolve into just one long stretching bridge from one shore to the other. Loeb Jr. was then able to convince the Louisiana legislature to create the Causeway Commission, with the Louisiana Bridge Company also being formed shortly after. James E. Walters was a appointed head of the project, then, in 1948, construction was underway. After eight years of construction costing about $46 million, or about $340 million today, the construction process was extremely unusual. According to Study.com, the construction of the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway was particularly noteworthy. To start with, the company that was tasked with building the bridge created a manufacturing plant at the site of the northern end of the bridge. This was notable because it meant that sections of the bridge could be created on site. The the bridge was created using an assembly line, which was a first for bridges at the time. The structure was also supported using piles, which are vertical support poles driven into the ground to hold up the structure. It was also made using pre-stressed concrete, which is a concrete that is poured around a very strong steel rod that has been put under tension. This makes the structure much stronger, which was necessary for a bridge that had to span such a long distance. The causeway was officially opened in 1956. The bridge itself is 23.86 miles long, and initially it included two straight continuous lanes, as well as three approach roads on the north entrance and a long entrance at the south. The causeway immediately became a widely used commodity by Louisiana drivers, providing to be a great convenience for the citizens. The benefit of this bridge was felt mostly by people who lived in the North Shore towns, but worked in New Orleans, with many drivers having their commute short 
shortened by 50 minutes. The achievement of a project like this, from an engineering point of view, led to the causeway being designated by the American Society of Civil Engineers as a National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark in 2013. Given its popularity, the causeway was unfortunately subject to several accidents, which resulted in many repairs and upgrades to the bridge. The most unfortunate of the accidents came in June of 1964, when a few barges crossing the lake collided with the causeway. Given how relatively low the water is, the barges hit the underside of the causeway, tearing a gap into the road, causing a bus to fall through it and into the water tragically killing six people. Now obviously, this gap created by the barges was repaired, but the causeway itself would go under for its first and most notable major renovation shortly after. The entire causeway was expanded with two extra lanes of road built alongside the original, effectively making the structure a linked bridge, though the new lanes were slightly longer. This new addition to the causeway cost around $30 million at the time, or about $170 million in today's terms, with money from the tolls on the bridge usually being used primarily to fund these improvement projects, as well as the ones in the future. And there would be more challenges ahead, as into the 21st century, the causeway would find itself involved in one of the most prominent natural disasters in American history. The causeway was hit hard by Hurricane Katrina, a massive Category 5 hurricane which caused a devastating amount of damage and tragic loss of life throughout Louisiana and Mississippi in August of 2005. As a result of the tidal surge, heavy rainfalls and intense winds, the causeway lost about 17 spans, as well as the fiber optic cable plant. However, the bridge luckily did not sustain any damage to the structural foundation, with mostly the turnarounds taking the brunt of the waves, wind, and rain. Unfortunately for New Orleans, many of the other bridges in the area were not as lucky. For example, the I-10 Twin Span Bridge, which was built in segments, lost about 38 sections to storm surge, with about a further 200 being pushed out of alignment, making the bridge inoperable. Because of the severe damage to the I-10 Twin Span Bridge and others, the causeway actually played a key role in the rescue, recovery, and reconstruction mission in New Orleans, with the bridge being frequently used by emergency service traveling across the entire district. Furthermore, the causeway was able to be repaired comparatively quickly, being reopened in late September, with full operations resuming the next month, meaning the whole bridge was back to how it was, offering a convenient path across the lake after only about two months following the hurricane. And today, the causeway still remains an integral part of New Orleans society and really Louisiana as a whole, with the bridge being crossed by thousands of drivers daily. As was mentioned before, with its length of 23.875 miles, the causeway was officially recognized as the longest bridge over water in the world by the Guinness Book of World Records shortly after the book was first founded, and it held that record for decades. However, there has been some controversy surrounding that title in the past 11 years. In 2011, the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge was built in China, measuring 26.5 miles long, nearly three miles longer than the causeway in Louisiana. Accordingly, Guinness stripped Louisiana's bridge of its famed record as the longest bridge over water in the world, handing over that record to the new Chinese bridge. Citizens of New Orleans, as well as people from across Louisiana, were deeply angered by this decision as the causeway is an essential part of their community, and the world record it held was also a point of pride and achievement for many. They were also quick to criticize the vague criteria that Guinness outlined for the new record. You see, for this record, which is titled Longest Bridge Over Water, Guinness included the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge and other candidates which have sections which don't actually cross water. For example, the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge itself is an aggregate structure, including non-continuous features, such as an underwater tunnel and several adjacent land bridges both of which were counted in the total length by the world record book. So while the Jiaozhou Bay 
Bridge was, of course, slightly longer overall. The New Orleans and Louisiana residents point out how the causeway has a longer portion which actually crosses water. In the end, the Guinness Book of World Records was able to end the controversy by simply creating two new separate categories, satisfying both parties. The first of which being the longest continuous bridge over water that was given to the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, and the longest aggregate bridge over water was given to the bridge in China. While the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge was actually passed by an even longer aggregate bridge from Hong Kong that was built in 2018, the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway still holds its own record to this day, with the citizens of New Orleans and Louisiana holding it dear to their hearts. So for those driving on the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway for the first time in their lives, the disappearing land, heavy fog, or long distance may be the only thing on your minds, but I'd argue that having the perspective from your car in the middle of a lake is such an oddity that this marvel, in particular, stands out as one of the American greats. And with that, don't forget to support the channel by registering with War Thunder by clicking our link in the description below. There's also a big bonus waiting for you, as mentioned earlier. Consider hitting that subscribe button and definitely do not miss our most controversial video to date about the rooftops of Texas. Until next time, guys, this is Ryan Sokash, signing off.